Hello and welcome to the Travel Troll and Mazzy. We've brought you somewhere very special today. We're in Cambridge, or on the outskirts of Cambridge, at the oldest building in Cambridge. And here it is, right behind us. It's not just any building either. It's a leper chapel. It's called the Leper Chapel because it's where lepers used to hang around people with leprosy. So the leper chapel, okay, it was built in 1125. 1125, you're looking at an almost 900 year old building. It's absolutely fascinating. Now leprosy in the Middle Ages, it became quite, quite a big thing. It started spreading quite badly. And I've got a few notes here. It says in France alone, they had 2000 leprosariums. You know, like uh, an aquarium, but leprosarium. <laughs> That's what they called it. 2,000 of these buildings just to treat people with leprosy. That's how spread out it was. And that was just in France, 2,000 of them. So it was a big thing. And people who had leprosy, they used to say about them, uh, the people who were infected with the disease were thought to be unclean, untrustworthy, and morally corrupt. So they didn't have a really good uh, vibe going on. They weren't, people didn't seem to like them. Don't know why, apart from the scaly faces. They were all right. So I know most of you will know what leprosy is. Some of you won't, especially the younger people. So I might just explain what it is very quickly. It's also known as Hansen's disease. And people are a bit wrong about the disease sometimes. They think it's a really easy to catch thing. You know, if, I, if, if uh, Mazzy, for example, had leprosy and I just touched her like that, I'm going to get it. It didn't work like that. It wasn't as contagious as that. Um, but things which you'd get if you had leprosy, Firstly, you could have it for 5 to 20 years without any symptoms. You wouldn't even know you've got it. Um, it could be much later in life before you start being scaly and looking like a lizard. But some of the things which uh, happened is you used to get problems with your nerves, trouble breathing, uh, skin problems and eye problems, uh, lack of the ability to feel pain. Now, I like that one. I'd quite like the lack of ability to feel pain. You know, everyone knows someone who they don't like, yeah? But you dare not have a fight with him in case he beats you up. Now, if I had leprosy, I'd go straight up to him. Come on, then, come on, I'm, I'm up for it, I'm up for it. Have a big fight with him. I won't feel pain, I won't feel pain. And I'd have the added bonus, I'd give him leprosy, and one day he'd look like a lizard. So, yeah, if you ever get leprosy, go for your worst enemy. That's what I'd do. And the two last things you get is weakness and poor eyesight. So Mazzy might already have it. You're quite weak and your eyes aren't great, are they? <laughs> They're better than yours. Yeah, I was going to say, I could have it, couldn't I? <laughs> yeah. I'm not the strongest of men. Yeah, I, I, I might be in my early stages of leprosy. It's not funny. Try not to worry too much if you do get it, because it is curable. Yeah, there's something called multi-drug therapy. So if you get it, just uh, get in touch with, there's a certain uh, World Health Organization, get in touch with them and they'll treat you for nothing and they'll cure it for you. Bonus, yeah? Um, it's still around in the world, mainly a lot, most of the cases are in, in India. I think about half of them are in India. But in the past 20 years, 16 million people worldwide have been cured from leprosy. And about 200 cases were reported every year in America. America, there's 200 of them in America. So I don't want to cause a panic for all you American viewers, but hey, don't trust your next door neighbour, they might have leprosy. That's all I'm saying. I should actually just point out, some people don't, they're, they're a bit offended by the word leper, including lepers. They don't like it. Um, the, the, the right thing to say to them is call them a person affected with leprosy. Okay, don't call them a leper. And back in 1954, they started a World Leprosy Day. I don't know what, where it is. It's something to do with drawing awareness to those affected um, by leprosy. I'm guessing they do that by collecting a load of the really ugly ones with leprosy, with really scaly faces, and give them blooms and stuff, 
and flags and they march down streets. I don't know how they spread the word, but they have a leprosy day, a world leprosy day. They won't have a world leprosy day in England because we don't have any cases of it. It's just America and India and places like that. So getting back to the story, it was built in 1125, this leper hospital. The only part left of the leper hospital is the leper chapel. Okay, you've got two parts to it, it's like two cell chapel. Now this was quite kind, I quite like this about one of our kings, King John. All right, King John in the year 1199 saw that these people had these scaly lizards and he wanted to try and help them out. Not, sorry, not people, it's not scaly lizards, people with uh, leprosy. Sorry, yeah, people with leprosy, not lepers, not scaly people, not lizards. I'll get it right, I'll get it right. Uh, King John wanted to help him out, so he says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you the right to hold a fair. You've got a big bit of grass around the back of there, it's called Stourbridge uh, Common. He says, you can hold a fair there once a year, and all the money you get from it, you can help it to cure your lizards. Well, not cure them, they didn't have a cure in them days. You can use it to look after your lizards. So, they had a fair every year. Now, they'll have never expected this to happen, but this fair became incredibly important. It became the biggest fair in medieval Europe. That is how big it was. It was huge. Now, the priest of the li lizards, he used to get the money from the fair. Will you hold it steady, please? Sorry. It's not funny. It's a serious documentary. Um, they'd get all this money from the fairs and the priest would get the money. He had a great job, he were earning a fortune with this uh, lizard king. And it went on and on until one day they moved all the lizards to Ely, which isn't far away, and this closed down. So, but the fair itself just kept growing. Um, growing and growing and growing. It, as I say, it was the biggest in medieval uh, Europe. The lizards were now in Ely and the chapel still remains till this day. So they carried on having the fairs around the corner and they actually used inside here to hold the stalls for the fair. You know, all the, you know, the big tents and things. They held them in here until 1751. They stopped all services here. They stopped having anything to do with it and the fair itself was abolished in 1933. But just recently, in the last couple of years, uh, a new society has started called the Friends of the Leper Chapel and they've started having uh, the fair on again once a year. The fair is held on a certain day, <coughs> bear with me. The fair was held on the Feast of the Holy Cross which is on the 14th of September every year. So if you want to come down to the Leper Chapel next year, um, get yourself here, it'll be a really good crack. Personally, I'd wear one of them masks. You don't want to get any lizard diseases. Uh, the Friends of the Leper Chapel, you know, if they're coming from around the world, especially India or America, you don't know, they might have a bit of something. So come prepared, um, put the right clothing on and a mask. But yeah, 14th of September, get yourself here. So the last thing I've got to say about it is really uninteresting. It was advertised for sale as a storage shed in 1753, I think it was. Uh, 1783. Apart from that, I've nothing else to say, so if, if you can just give me the camera, please. Um, that is the Leper Chapel. What did you think of the Leper Chapel? Interesting. Very interesting, isn't yeah. it? Um, yeah, it, as I say, you can't get inside, unfortunately. I think they just open it up on Leper Day. Um, people of the lepers, friends of the, le what do they call them? Leprosy, people with Leprosy Day. <laughs> Lizard Day, just call it Lizard Day, it's a lot easier to remember. Um, it is open on that day I believe and I've seen pictures where they do like dancing and stuff around here. Get yourself here, shed your skin, have some fun. <laughs> anyway, thank you for this one. Uh, how many marks? Do you give it any marks? Uh, six. Six? Yeah. yeah, six, because we can't get inside. I, I love the history of it. I really love the fact that the biggest medieval fair was just round the back of here. That's the most exciting bit. bit. And people who looked like that were in there, loads of them, <laughs> loads of them. Thanks for joining us. Uh, see you next time. Say goodbye, Mazzy. Bye. And when you finish watching this video, please make sure you go and wash your hands. <laughs>
Don't want all <laughs> spreading. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs> Many thanks for watching guys, please don't forget to click like, subscribe, leave a comment and share the video. And be sure to check out my other channel Deep Digger Dan and my website thetraveltroll.uk. You can also follow me on Facebook, on Twitter and on Instagram. But most importantly please do donate to the charity which we're supporting in this county. All links to everything I've just mentioned are all in the description below. Please come back tomorrow as we continue our adventure to try and make the biggest video library of the sites of the UK. Goodbye!